It's Monday, September 25th. I'm Jeff Schwartz. This is Jeff Schwartz. It's smarter than you. We're live on Twitter, YouTube, and on your favorite podcast platform of choice. We're brought to you by PrizePix. It's a skill-based, real-money, daily fantasy sports game. Go to PrizePix and use code GSSY for a first deposit match up to $100. You pick two to six players. If they will go more or less than the PrizePix projection, you can win up to 25 times your money in any entry. We're making my selections for the two Monday Night Football games. Again, back-to-back Monday Night Football games at the end of the show today. We'll talk about all the NFL action through week three, some college football action as well as I do cover the best conference in all of football for the final year of the Pac-12 Conference. Gabe Goodwin is joining me as he does on Mondays. Gabe, I am in uh, hour 19 of the Yom Kippur fast. Uh, no water and no food. Um I don't mm. know how my energy is going to be. I might be hangry. I'm, I'm, I might be like you having to talk about Tom Brady. Just angry and despondent, but I'm going to get through it anyways. Yeah, today you're treating food like the Chicago Bears treat offense. None of that, please. We have things to atone for. <laughs> we, do, we do have things to atone for. Uh, I need the Eagles to cover tonight. We'll have a winning week if I can, uh, if I can, uh, if I can get uh, some atonement on some losing weeks uh, in previous years. So hopefully the Eagles cover tonight. We'll get ourselves a, a winning week here. Uh, not a lot of tough beats for us. I know we went over this on Friday. I I, I enjoy the vaulted pools, but I am bad at them. I need to atone for some of those mistakes. Uh, the, the Vikings, I took the Vikings. Oh, your Chargers pulled it out. Your Chargers saved. Rance Haley saved his job. It might be a bad thing for the Chargers to have won that football game. Uh, but we've done well with our picks. Uh, we roll on the Pac-12 as well. Um, another Look, the NFL, man, is the best because – of what we saw this weekend, right? It's just so unpredictable every Sunday. The Cowboys lose a couple teams, three teams really put up monster offensive numbers, and it, uh, every week is different. I, I, that's what we love about it. Yeah, I mean, the, the league has been pretty kind of drunk, if I may say so myself. The first three weeks weekend was tar. Um, there's a lot we can cover here, Jeff. We're also going to get to the things that I think we just – do not need to cover any longer. You mentioned the Patriots beating the Jets. I think we're pretty close to not needing to talk about the Jets unless we're talking about rumors, in which case I'm all for it. But do you want to start with the good teams and just wait yes. wait till the end for the bad teams? Well, let's start right, with the good. So let's, let's obviously the then start. Let's obviously start with Tua, the Dolphins, the track team they have running on offense, the Big 12 scores that they're putting on the board. Uh, 70 points. I thought I was like, I wasn't watching by the end and I thought that was a joke. And then I went and checked 70 points in an NFL game. Uh, obviously Denver stinks, but Miami is doing a lot right. And to a, I said it a week or two ago, I'm asking it again. At what point do we stop putting qualifiers on it? Isn't he just the MVP? Isn't he running the best offense in football? The, the the one qualifier is if he stays healthy. Like, that's not really a qualifier thing for his current play, right? That's the qualifier for, like, projecting the Dolphins out for the whole season. It's not it's not the qualifier for now, which is now it's – they scored 70 offensive points, Gabe. Like, not even just – no special team scores. 70 offensive points. Every time – so it was it was on the four box for the, for the YouTube TV, uh, for the Sunday ticket, I think it was on the four box. And, like, I'd turn away to look at Red Zone Channel, turn back, and, and, and they scored again. Not only that – they made it look easy. It wasn't like the Broncos did anything to disrupt the scoring. They just boom, 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 boom. We're seeing really the genius of Mike McDaniel. It starts with the run game first. The way he designs the run game and how that complements the passing game. You know, a lot of times the pass game might complement the run game now, but the way he does the run game sets up so many things he, he does in the pass and the speed. This is what the, the vision really of two offense sort of put together, in my opinion, right? It's the Shanahan offense. And then really sort of like the ideas of what Belichick has done on defense with, with interchangeable parts and what Andy Reid has always wanted to do with the interchangeable parts on offense, right? Where you just have all these skilled guys that can do so many different things. That's not really been a Kyle Shanahan thing or a Mike Shanahan thing, right? That's been more of, of kind of that, the Andy Reid sort of idea of having multiple on offense, multiplicity, different guys doing different things, but all looking kind of the same. That's what they have on offense, plus the Shanahan run game stuff, dude. It's unbelievable to watch that that no look shovel pass to it did with his offhand, like all the cool things that the motions and the reverse. And it, it's unbelievably fun to watch. And Denver's offense. There's a picture that I saved um, that uh, it, you can go to my Twitter and check it out. To my likes, 
where there's like one, two, three, four, five Broncos, six Broncos was on the ground, just on the ground is a chain is running for a touchdown. Um, it, it was, it was there in the blend. It was, it was hard, man. They had a rough go of it. Um, Teron Armstead was back for the Dolphins at left tackle too. So like they're even, they're even rolling even better now. Yeah, defensively, I think I'm surprised they're not as good with Fangio's. I thought they'd be early in the season, but that's not really a concern of mine when you, when you put up 70 points like this. Um, it's been a lot of fun to watch, man. It's a fun team to watch, and Dolphins fans should be very excited about what they can do this year. So let's just skip to the obvious uh, question then. I, some of us here who put this show there would like to put the Bills in this category. I'm making the executive decision that they do not belong in this category. The Dolphins are the top AFC. Um, obviously, there are a thousand, maybe a million shows talking about Kelsey and T Swift and all that. I don't think either you or I have anything to add to that conversation. So let's talk about their offense. What seems to be a healthy Kelsey. And they have all these weapons and all these guys who play multiple positions and tricky and they pints when they, how do these two based on three weeks of watching them go? Can you, can you repeat that real quick? You, you, you cut out for a second on the chiefs. How do the Dolphins and Chiefs match oh, up? We know both their Oof. offenses work. How do their defenses match up against each other? Well, the Chiefs' defense is good. I mean, there's no doubt about it, right? They play well. They haven't played the best offenses in the NFL, but clearly playing those young secondary pieces last year has helped them a lot. Chris Jones being back has changed the pass. This feels like a classic college game game where it's like the last possession wins, right? Like whoever has the ball last is going to win. Whoever makes the one mistake on offense, they're going to lose. And that happens in football games, right? There's a game, Oregon and Washington are playing in a couple of weeks, and we'll talk about the Pac-12. And my, my analysis for, for that game is like, I don't know, whoever forces one punt wins, right? If you're the Chiefs and the Dolphins, if they ever play each other, I think they do play each other this season. It's like, who forces the one punt? Who, who tips a ball that, that, that causes interception? Who has a weird, a freak fumble for for no apparent reason? Like those are the ways these games are going to go because both teams are really good. Um, and we saw Kansas City yesterday. I know the Bears stick. I get that. And and the Bears are a team we're going to probably cross off here at the end of the show. We're not going to talk about it anymore in this show. Um, but like th this is uh, the Chiefs' offense looked whole again, right? Guys were catching the football. Uh, Patrick Mahomes had tons of time this season. Uh, the Jawan Taylor thing is, I think the NFL is going a little overboard now with some of the alignment issues, but they looked whole again. Again, I know bad Bears team, who, who cares? You should look good against the bad Bears team. So um, it's one of those things where like, I think whoever ends up with the ball last wins the game, which we've seen a lot of times for Chiefs games, right? It's Patrick Mahomes has the ball last and the Chiefs win the game, or Josh Allen has the ball last and or the, or the Burrow has the ball last and, and the Chiefs have lost the game. So um, it'd be fun, man. But I'll tell you what, in a game like that, it's everyone's going to assume the game's going to be 45-42. I bet just like 28-24. Like it's going to be a much slow scoring in, in, than we think because both teams are really good. Um, I can't wait for it, man. I, I did not put the Dolphins, and we were high on this podcast. Our, our season preview put Dolphins over. We have Mike McDaniel, Coach of the Year, money on. Like we have Tariq Hill over. Like we have all those Dolphins futures. We like the Dolphins. I did not think they would be this good early in the season. And, and I'll tell you one one thing. If you're like a guy who wants to hate the Dolphins, oh, it's, it's fake, it's not real. It's real. But typically after four weeks is when we see the first sort of um, kind of reverting a little bit because you've seen film. There's not regression, but we see a little bit of a change in either good or bad in the NFL, right? Because after four weeks, we have enough film now of what any team wants to do. The cream sort of rise to the, the top. And the teams that sort of are fugazi, which is not the Dolphins, tend to drop off a tiny bit. Um, and so we're going to have more film on Mike McDaniel. Does that does that change how the Dolphins play offense? I don't think so. But if you're looking for something to say, hey, how do the Dolphins slow down? This is it, right? Yeah, you're going to have four weeks, three weeks now. But you have four weeks of film coming up soon. And then do things change as teams get more film? I would say no, because they're scheming up good things. Uh, and I, they're scary, man. Like, you have to have the respect of, of the Dolphins right now. Okay, so you talked about speed s slowing down in the figurative sense. Can I ask you a question? I don't think I've ever asked you more literal. They're they're relying on the fastest players in the NFL, quite literally. The five fastest seeds during play this all been guys offense, right? So it's Dane yeah. and uh, Mostert had one, and obviously Waddle can burn too. I guess my question is. 
to you is this. Do fast guys get slower during the season? Like, does does everyone sort of meet at a more normal speed as everyone gets banged up and tired and, and run down? Or do the fast guys start to separate from the track? The um, pack, I should say. I don't think that's a great answer for this because it depends on how beat up guys get, right? How injured guys get, how, um, you know, how, uh, the bumps and bruises happen, you know, the, the, the way, um, that teams monitor reps now in practice and the way players treat their bodies, it's better than ever before. Like they're, they're not, you know, like players are able to, to recover and to just beat optimal performance on game day now, both in college and the NFL, better than ever before. So like Tyreek Hill is not going to get slower, I think, as the season goes on. Um, but you all know, get it. If you tweak an ankle, you get a, a, a thigh bruise, you get a hip pointer. I mean, there's ways to slow down injury-wise, but just if he's healthy, there's no chance he slows down. There's just no way. Unless, again, teams figure out what they're doing. And we saw last year it took about eight weeks for the Dolphins <laughs> to, to get figured out. Um yeah, uh, you know, I don't, maybe it happens in week five, like six, seven, at some point they're going to have a game just like everyone does, like, like the Cowboys had, where it's like, oh shit. Okay. Well, someone got us now. H- how do we, how do we adjust off of that? Yeah. The Cowboys did get got, and uh, we should probably just take a, a brief tangent to say, what, what the hell was that? Like I kept yeah. watching that game thinking, all right, yeah, but like, Dak will figure it out. They're going to score. They'll probably even score two or three more times. And each drive and obviously ended, you know, the way that it did. What, was that just one of those games in, in a 10, 12, 13 win season, you're going to dump one silly game a year? Um, well, we always dump a silly game a year. We, we always know that. Um, I don't think I thought it would be the Cardinals. Uh, the Cowboys are 12 and a half point favorites. Their offensive line was down three guys. It wasn't all the reason why they had red zone troubles. But we do know that – in the red zone, I've mentioned this for many years. Now, the red zone is an important part where you, where you need your offensive line because the, the rush – quarterbacks aren't dropping as deep in the red zone when they pass the ball because you don't have to, right? The, the routes are shorter, condensed, because the field gets smaller and smaller and smaller as you get to the, the end zone. And so they rush – teams rush the passer differently. They kind of power you. They kind of just, boom, go right at you. And so if you're a backup, you're not ready for that type of thing, the pocket can close down on quarterbacks much quicker – um also running the ball safeties are a little closer to the line of scrimmage now so you have to have an offense line that punches a hole in the defense right otherwise safeties are coming up and making plays so is is it condenses down in the red zone the offensive line feels almost more important and the cowboys were down some guys it's not their fault they lost the game Dak didn't play terribly well um goes so another point by the way about tanking right we talk about it all the time teams don't take on sundays the Cardinals have been leading in the first two games at halftime obviously now three games at halftime and won this game Guys are going to play hard, man. If you in the NFL do not think you are going to get a contest each weekend because the team is bad, you're going to lose that game. I'm not saying the Cowboys did that, but that is something that uh, that happens each week in the NFL. Yeah, I, I think you're right. You, you've always been clear on this show with me. The players don't tank. Nobody on a Sunday is tanking. The front office, with the offseason, that, that's when you can try to shape a roster, but players want to play. They want to win. The coach is out there there to save his job. He's trying to tank. But let's use that as our segue to some of these terrible teams that at some point will be accused of tanking because they stink. Yeah. And the purpose of me naming them is not to spend time on them, but to decide if we're putting them in the let's not speak of them the rest of the season category, or there's something still alive or interesting about them. Okay, let's that do work? it. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Let's, let's start with one that I think is a consensus. The Broncos. Do we just Bye-bye. stop talking about the Broncos from here forward? The only interesting thing about the Broncos is whether or not Russell Wilson gets benched at some point this season or whether they just ride it out and then get rid of him after the season. Like, he's just not going to be there next year. It's not his fault completely. The, the defense has been really bad. But he won't be there next year. I mean, th- this experiment just um, just hasn't hasn't worked. It didn't work. I don't know where he'll be next year, but he won't be with he won't be with the Broncos. And have, if you're the Chiefs, the, the Chiefs are 2-1 and one right now, right? They lost uh, week one to uh, to Jacksonville. The Raiders are one and two with a one point win over the Broncos. The Broncos are zero and three, and the Chargers are the Chargers. Like the Chiefs have won the division already at through three weeks. Okay, well you're you're previewing a couple other teams we might want to talk about, but the Broncos we're saying until something crazy happens with the coach or the quarterback, 
Week in, week out, we do not need to speak about them, even if they win a game. We're done with them. The yes. Bears, interesting oh. because there were such high hopes for Justin Fields and so many other questions about how they're doing things there. But do we have to talk about it? Can we just watch it burn down? Uh, yeah, I, I was thinking about this yesterday. Um, you know, their coach is going to be fired. It just it just matter. It just uh, depends on like when and who on the roster or who on the coaching staff can be the head coach. Like I don't know if they have someone they feel comfortable with leading the team because the the, the Bears are just they're toast, man. They're, they're just not a good football team. Um, the offensive schemes are terrible. Defense is not any good. Obviously, we've seen that now. They they allowed thirty eight points, thirty six to the Packers. Um, they let Tampa Bay, you know, beat them by ten. Chiefs dominated that game. It's, it's not good. Um, I think the only thing we need to talk about now is whether or not, you know, uh, Justin Fields is their quarterback of the future. I, I would say no. Um, and then the only thing now, too, is also like, are they in the Caleb Williams sweepstakes? Are, are they a team with the with the worst record in the NFL? And, you know, they're a team that's going to go try to get themselves Caleb Williams at some point. So should the Bears do what failed to do? which is try to offload Justin Fields for something while someone still think play. Obviously we've I just seen don't know. that he I just, isn't what he, it, it won't be. It won't be during the season. Yeah. I, but could they trick some per, there's always some new coach who thinks he's the QB whisperer yeah. who can turn garbage into something good. Should they try to deal him and just rebuild? Um, I, 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 I mean, in an ideal world, great, but this, this is not going to, it's just not going to happen. I mean, I, this is, this quarterback class coming up in 2024, dude, is really good. There's going to be a discussion, by the way, a, a really firm discussion at number one with Drake May and Caleb Williams. I, I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to want Drake May over Caleb Williams. Um, and so, you know, that, that's a discussion we're going to have a lot heading into, into the season. Shadur Sanders, I think he didn't play well against Oregon, but he's a definite, First round draft pick, in my opinion, he's a good football player. Michael Penix, Bo Nix, Riley Leonard, like there's going to be there'll be someone that comes out of nowhere that someone freaks out of. Oh my God, he's a big arm. He's going to go in the first round. Um, yeah. There's Cam Ward, by the way, Washington State. I mean, he's a he's a second round pick, probably. Like, there's all these guys that are going to go to the NFL next year. Are you taking a reclamation project in Justin Fields? Are you drafting your own guy in this? You're drafting your own guy, in my opinion, um, in this draft, and so. I, I don't think Fields will have much of a, a – someone will – look, if someone's trading a fourth-round pick for, for, for Trey Lance, or they're certainly trading a fourth-round pick for Justin Fields. The question is, is it to start? I would say no. All right, fair enough. Then let's, let's skip over this next one and go to the Panthers. I think this is a time saver. Obviously, we're all interested in Bryce Young's long-term future and his career. But right now, with Dalton in there and the, that lineup, like, we don't care, do we? No. Not, 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 not just not interesting. Okay. Team. No. So we're this, keeping them off, off the rundown for the next few weeks until crazy happens. Here's a harder one. Go in three teams, the Vikings. I think the only interesting part for, for the us is if, is the cousins uh, trade stuff, right? The cousins to the Jets, I think is, is basically very unlikely to happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Vikings, you know, the, this is the regression we talked about, right? Um, the Chargers tried to give them that game. I mean, they got the ball back at the 24 right. yard line against a really bad defense. It took like seven plays to move 15 yards, including I thought was a, was a, a questionable, uh, you know, what was a legal contact downfield call um, on there. Mm -hmm. And, and they still couldn't get the ball in the end zone. Like it was and, and the Vikings were taking all their time. It was just poorly coached in that last minute. This is to be fair. I'm not sure it's poorly coached, whether it's just Kirk cousins, not ready for that moment, which he never seems ready in those moments. Um, so, but look, the North, the Lions are okay, right? The Packers, whew, that was a rough one. If uh, Derek Carr doesn't get hurt, I think the Saints win that game. I think I've never said that in my life before about Derek Carr. Um, and one other team, uh, the, the, the Bears stink. So we might have to talk about them because of the division. What do you think? Oh, we lost, oh, we might lost Gabe there. All right, well. It's to one, one of the teams in this category. The is the Jets are one and two. All right. Everyone. 
we, um, I, and we're obviously gonna have to for the people, but um, I'm still with. You're, you're, yeah, we're gay. We, all right. I think, I think Gabe, you're back. Okay, it's Gabe back. Are we ready to go? I feel, Give me I a... feel like I'm back, and I never lost. Okay, this, so uh, all right, let's start pick over. It up okay. from here. The, go, the, go again. The people who you listen later, this is how it works. This is where the edits come in. So for those <laughs> watching live, we'll just be here. The Kirk Cousins and the Vikings. Let's talk Jets. The one and two Jets. Everyone thinks they're winning the Super Bowl if they get Kirk Cousins. Do we have to talk about the Jets? No, their Jack Wilson is a certifiable bust. It it just is what it is. Um, I think the only interesting part is if they get cousins. Otherwise, the Jets are are no more. We're not talking about them anymore. They're done. We have to talk about the team uh, that beat them, the Patriots. Uh, I probably not. Not in that division, right? I mean, there's just there's just no reason to do that right now. They're they're just. They're so mediocre in offense, and that's even nice to the word mediocre. Um, I think no, I would say no. Other than we bet seven and over seven and a half wins, other that's only maybe the only reason we talk about them to see if we're going to cash our wager. But no, that's not going to happen. But we might well, my lost Gabe again. All right, I'll, I'll keep going here while 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 we get Gabe's internet back here. We got yeah, Jacksonville. We're, we're making go. picks. You got to think about the numbers and decide if yes. you want to make a play. Was involved. I mean, on the this one. All right, we might have to we might have to, to to work on Gabe's connection there. I'll do a couple more teams here when we get Gabe back here. Um, let's do the the one and two Jacks. Interesting about Jacksonville, um, their offense has been pretty stinky so far. Uh, but if you look at the the numbers and and what they've missed, I think I saw the, the number today that they've had the most big plays lost to drop passes, uh, which we've seen other teams like Kansas City have this issue. And once they start catching the ball, everything clicks once again. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see Jacksonville. So I'm for sure talking about Jacksonville. I, I I'm just going to continue to do that. Um, their fifth in offense success rate on first and second down and twelfth overall. Um, they just they just haven't had things quite go their way yet, which is what ha happens in the NFL sometimes. They were the darling team heading this season. Start slow a little bit. Started slow last year. The Titans are one and two as well. I, I just – we'll talk about them from a gambling perspective just because um, we like betting on the Titans, even though we didn't do it last, this week and we're lucky. They were 30 – they lost, what, 30 to 3, 27 to 3, something like that. But their offense is, is not good. I've been saying this for weeks now. We faded their offense. We faded Ryan Tannehill and – the Titans will only be talked about in terms of gambling, nothing to do with uh, with their success on off the field on Mondays. All right, Gabe, I, I covered the last two teams. Um, let's get to some uh, college football talk here. Yeah, good. And apologies to the people watching live uh, if the internet is an issue, right? I'll go quick. The Pac-12 is the greatest conference in history. The Whoa! top 10 is filled with Pac-12 teams, not SEC teams. Uh, maybe this all changes in a few weeks when they beat each other up. At least three title contenders coming out of the Pac-12 in your Ducks, my Trojans, and Utah who could beat them both. What the hell's going on with the Pac-12, Jeff? It's great. Unfortunately, you mentioned, you've not mentioned Washington. It might be the best of all the Pac-12 teams. The first time in Pac-12 history, four Pac-12 teams, Pac-10, whatever you want to call Pac-10, Pac-12, have been ranked in the top 10. It's incredible. And they, they, of course, the voters were lazy, just like six, seven, eight, nine. Like, like you know, like you couldn't put Washington higher. As, I think Washington, Washington's really good. Here's the thing about the Pac-12. You mentioned the four teams, right? I think it goes USC, Washington, Oregon, Utah. Utah is 4-0 without their starting quarterback. It's incredible. They've beaten three Power 5 teams without a starting quarterback. Beat Florida, Baylor, and UCLA without a starting quarterback. Not only that, Gabe... Their third string quarterback played two of those games, and their fourth string played in the other two games, Weber State and obviously against the Bruins. Their defense has been incredible so far. USC offensively, not a concern. A little sloppy against ASU. Defensively, I still got question marks. ASU had scored 39 points, Gabe, in the first three games, put 20 up on, on USC. That game was 35-28 in the fourth quarter. That one play, Scadabo Scott, scored the, the, uh, the touchdown on two USC defenders just fell on the ground in front of them. Like, just go tackle. Go tackle, please. Washington offensively, incredible. They are so good offensively. And we saw, I've been telling people for weeks, Oregon's defense is good. Hopefully people will get it now. Oregon's defense is good. Now, the best part about all this game, the best part, 
starting October 14th and November 11th. These four teams play each other. They round robin October 14th, Oregon, Washington, same weekend as USC, Notre Dame. Go to the very end, November 11th. It's USC, Oregon, and it's Washington, Utah. Like, holy heck, man. Like, what? What? it's it's a great time to be a West Coast football fan, except for one more year until this is all done and the, the Pac-12 just closes up shop. But the Pac-12 is good because of quarterbacks, right? Quarterbacks and coaching is really good. I want to say something very quickly. Um, I like Deion Sanders. I think he's good for college football. He is good for the sport. People are watching college football because of Dion. Great. I love it. I think it's fantastic. I'm all for it. I've never said anything bad about Deion Sanders. I think it's great. I've been covering Colorado for years now. They've stunk. I'm glad he's in the game. But Gabe, we can't do this thing where we just let all reality go and just say platitudes about Dion and Colorado that are not with reality. And again, this is no knock at Dion. He's done a great job. What, what he has done so far should be commended, even with the loss to Oregon and the eventual loss to USC this weekend. That game, I think, actually will be – I'm going to bet on Colorado to cover the spread. Like, I saw it this morning. Someone on the network that I work at, so I'm kind of not sure if I can tweet about this later, and it's, I'm not supposed to be tweeting on Yom Poor, said that coaches from other schools helped Oregon game plan to beat Colorado. That's not that's not true. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Just say Colorado lost, Oregon won, and move it to free. Oregon has a 30-year offensive line coach as an analyst. They have 25 analysts. They do not need other coaches to call them to help game plan. For Just say Oregon kicked their ass. It happens. And, you know, I see these things about recruiting. Well, Oregon's scared because of Dion in recruiting. What? Are you watching what's happening in recruiting rankings right now? Oregon is not scared of Colorado. Yeah, Colorado's got good football players. Did you watch the trenches? You know how you build up the trenches, Gabe? You know this because you're a USC fan who can't do it right now. You need high school recruits. High school recruits is how you build up the trenches. You get one or two transfers, absolutely. But you need high school recruits to build the trenches up, not transfer portal players. For years, look at the best offensive – Georgia. How many, how many transfer portal players do you, you think are starting on Georgia's offensive defensive line right now? Without looking, maybe one. Maybe one. You need the high school recruiting to do that. And people are just saying, well, they're scared because of – no, they're not. They're not scared because of that. Colorado is going to be good. They're going to be even better next season. I've said all along I thought 2024 was going to be their year. But why are we going over the top with this, Gabe? Like you can, and I get there's pushback from people that have, have, have tones that are in, they're, they're not appropriate. I get that. I understand that. But the, the stuff about like today, like coaches called Oregon a game plan. What are we doing? Like just say Oregon beat up. Why can't you give Oregon some credit for doing a good job this weekend? Sorry. Ridiculous. Yeah. And Dion did. I mean, Dion's post game was none of the stuff that, you know, has attracted clicks or gotten attention or, you know, made the debate shows. He just simply said that was a really well coached team. And they played really well and good job by them getting ready for this game. And they beat us. <laughs> that was it. That's what he said. Yeah. And the whole, the whole, the whole pregame speech from Lanning, who, that's not a, who gives a shit? Like he didn't mention Colorado. First of all, we knew he was talking about Colorado. He didn't mention them. He didn't mention Dion. And you know who liked that speech? The, the five-star defensive end who committed after the game to Oregon. That's who liked the speech. It doesn't matter if you didn't like the speech. It matters what we're cruising about the speech. Like it's so the pearl clutching of society because Dan Lanning said from Oregon of all places, we're not here for clicks. We're here for whatever he, physicality, whatever he said. They went out and did it. They're 42, nothing. And then they just like, they, they just stopped playing football. Their backups were in, in the fourth quarter against a top 25 football team. Like they just kicked their ass and that's fine. Again, I want to be very clear. Does not take away from what Colorado has done this season. They've had a great season so far. They're going to possibly be a bowl, se a bowl team. They're going to win six games. But, like, what are we doing? What are we doing with this stuff? So I had to get that in. I, I Again, I have much admiration for what Dion has done so far. But some of the people that just started co following college football that just make these proclamations about um, what's happening in the sport is just is not with reality. End of, end of rant. Well, I don't want to be a distraction here with what is obviously choppy internet. So I'm going to throw this at you and then you you go ahead and take the break and come back yes. and make your picks for this evening. But here's what I want to know. You mentioned Libin and Drake May. 
Caleb goes to Colorado this weekend. So far, he's the obvious Heisman winner, but he hasn't been tested much. What should we expect in that game? And what can we expect of all these great teams that are in that round robin tournament? Which of them prevails in the Pac-12 if you had to bet? Or is it two? Well, it's it's to me, it's still Utah and Oregon. They have the best defenses. Um, that's kind of been what I've said all along. Um, you know, Washington's defense has, has has been good, but hasn't played anyone, benefited from from turnovers and some some uh, bounces their way. We'll just find out more about these teams. I, I think Colorado plays better at home, and USC's defense is not Oregon. I think they score they score points and they make this game. They cover this game, 23, 24 points. Um, and you know, I'm I'm actually going to wager on Colorado. It's going to be one of my you know, my my Pac-12 plays most likely um, for this week. So that's where I'm rolling with the, with college football for now. Also very fun to mention Notre Dame playing with 10 players in the final two plays of the game. Not, not here to play football. Not great. It's not, not the ideal way to play football. You just can't have those errors as a coach um, where you just don't have enough players on the field. Uh, but that's college football for you. That's, that's the fun thing about the sport. It's uh, you know, the NFL can be drunk sometimes, but college football has just this, these storylines that, um, Wow, it's it's a, a lot of madness happening on every Saturday uh, from the start, from 12 uh, Eastern all the way till, till about 2 a.m. Eastern, and uh, we love covering it here. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll come back with my, my Monday Night Football preview and my prize picks uh, square for the game. We hit it last week. We were three for three last week. Hopefully, we'll do that again. We'll be back in a second. Just come back and do this. Don't use me. Just do Jeff. No, I'm gonna do it. That's for your. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep it clean. I'm, I'm just pretend I'm not here. All right, we're back. Let's talk about Monday Night Football. Two games again. I just wish they'd go back to one. The two games feel like a lot of overkill after watching football the entire weekend, but we have two of them. The first one is the Eagles and the Bucks. We have the Eagles minus five. Um, they're off a longer rest. They played Thursday night. I just don't know what the Bucks are with Baker Mayfield. They, they've been the Vikings, who we know aren't that good, but you know that also the turnover issues with with uh, Minnesota helped uh, Tampa Bay win that game. And then uh, they beat the Bears, who, who we know uh, – like stick. I think Eagles kind of have this a get right game for them on the road. Not much of a home field advantage for Tampa Bay. And then the Rams and Bengals play tonight. It looks like Burrow might play. The line has moved from Bengals minus one half to Bengals three today. And if Burrow plays, I feel much better about them. They're zero two. They, they desperately need a win here. Uh, the Rams have have done a decent job so far this year. We know they beat the Seahawks. A little bit of a struggle against the Niners last weekend. I think the Bengals get this game done on. The road, my prize pick square will will, will uh, fit in two of these games here. Remember, use the code GSSY for a first deposit match up to $100. Go to prize picks and use that promo code. You can uh, do a square two to six players. I like doing three, win up to 25 times your money. We hit last week. We we're three for three last week. We're going to try to do it again here. I like taking quarterback um, to be less than their totals all the time. We did it yesterday uh, with Zach Wilson. Did it yesterday with Ryan Tannehill. We'll do it again with Baker Mayfield in the first in the first game. 226.5 yards. We're going less. We're going less than that. I think mean, it's a tough time for him against his Eagles front. And I think he just, you know, last week he, he got some deeper ball. I don't think it's going to happen this weekend. I just expect him to pull it back a tiny bit. I say that with also having Mike Evans over 54 and a half, to me, more uh, than 54 and a half yards as part of my square as well. So if Baker Mayfield does complete the ball, and we'll go to Mike Evans. Mike Evans, I say this all the time, maybe the most underrated wide receiver in the NFL. He is the one that Baker Mayfield looks to. And against Eagles secondary, there are opportunities, I think, for there to be a couple big plays, a couple third downs. Throw up to Mike, make it happen. So to me, I get it. Baker Mayfield, we're going less than 226.5 yards. And Mike Evans, more than 45 and a half receiving yards. So kind of, we'll see how that works together. And the other one I have, a little curveball here, Matt Stafford over, Matt Stafford, more than 3.5 Rushing yards. I know you think that's weird. Matt Stafford running the ball. That's no way that's actually happening. Matt Stafford has 27 rushing yards this season so far because his offensive line is not very good. He's having to run the ball more than usual. So I'm going to wager that he's going to have to have a couple of runs in this game. And they're not going to yield the ball down. They're not going to be ahead in this game. So we will not lose any yardage there for Neil down. So more than three and a half 
rush yards for Matt Stafford. Could happen in one play, just kind of breaks loose, gets four, five, six, seven yards, and we're over there. So those are my prize picks square for today. I'll repeat again. Baker Mayfield more than two, excuse me, Baker Mayfield less than 226 passing yards. Mike Evans more than 54.5 receiving yards, and Matt Stafford more than 3.5 rush yards. That is our show for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're fasting like myself, hope you had an easy fast. We back on uh, Friday with our wagering preview. Hope we get the Eagles cover tonight and we end up with three and two week. Take care, everyone. Have a good couple of days. Talk to you guys on Friday. up the prize pick stuff with the more and less stuff. Alright. Okay. Alright guys, we're good? Alright guys, good work today. Talk to you guys later. Alright, bye.